to Holistic IAS. This is C. Hari Krishna. In this video, we will discuss an important question on Great Indian Bustard. Of course, we will have information related to other species of Great Indian Bustard, Bustard group, what we call. The Great Indian Bustard is no doubt, you know, is almost on the verge of extinction because it is critically endangered. Not only that, not only that, the reason why we have to discuss this particular question now, this particular topic, especially the Great Indian Bustard, is its importance related to COP 13. The Conference of Parties 13 to the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species was held at Gandhinagar, you know, in Gujarat in February 2020. So that is the reason why so we have to discuss. So this Great Indian Bustard has been selected as mascot for COP 13 with the name Gibi the Great. So that was the uh, main reason why, of course, we have to study this. Now, with relation to Great Indian Bustard, please look at this question. The question is, the Great Indian Bustard has become endangered, critically endangered. Which of the following birds also belong to the Bustard group? Now, there are four birds here. One, two, three, four. The first one, Haubara. The second one is Bengal Florican. The third is Lesser Florican. And of course, fourth, Himalayan Quail. Now, you have to find out which of these four actually belong to the Bustard group. In fact, if you look at the options A, 1 and 4, B, 2 and 4, C, 1, 2, 3, and D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. In order to know this information, so in order to know the answer, so let us go to the Great Indian Bustard. Please try to get the answer meanwhile. So coming to the Great Indian Bustard. So the Great Indian Bustard, the scientific name is Ardiotis nigriceps. This particular bird was widely distributed earlier in almost the western parts of the country and at the same time even in other states like uh, Madhya Pradesh, even Andhra Pradesh also in Karnataka. In fact, in Andhra Pradesh, it was restricted to the Rolla Padu Wildlife Sanctuary near Karnataka. But today, you don't find these birds in all these states. They are now restricted to mainly Rajasthan and Gujarat. In fact, so today the number of birds have declined to around 150 and uh, in Rajasthan alone you can find almost 122 birds and so on. So th that is almost, you know, we have come to the end of this bird. Of course, many recovery programs are being going on. This particular bird in 1994 was identified as endangered in the list of threatened species of IUCN. Not only that, it is also identified in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. In fact, the same IUCN has, you know, categorized it as critically endangered in 2013's list of threatened species. It's also listed in the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species and at the same time is also listed in the Appendix 1 of CITES, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, Flora and Fauna. This particular bird in 2013, the Rajasthan government started Great Indian Bustard Project. Even the Desert National Park in Rajasthan is the place where these birds are today protected. In fact, this is also being, you know, recovered that species, the number is being improved under the species recovery of the integrated development of wildlife habitats, which is uh, being managed by the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, if you look at this particular bird, so this actually prefers undisturbed grasslands and at the same time the male is polygamous and uh, this bird is an omnivore. Okay, it feeds on different types of insects, it can feed on rodents, it can feed on certain reptiles also. Now this bird is also called friend of the farmer. Why it's called friend of the farmer? Because it feeds on the pest insects that damage the crops. Okay, and at the same time, if you look at this bird doesn't prefer those areas where the grasses are taller than them. That is uh, what you also can identify. Now this bird has been facing really a lot of threats for all these years. In fact, if you look at the threats, Poaching had been there from the beginning. In fact, it is also poached in adjacent Pakistan area where it is also found to some extent. The overhead power lines and the irrigation, especially in the Indira Gandhi Canal region, the irrigation has you know, expanded the agriculture so that the wildlife you know, habitats, the grassland habitats have come down. And not only that, further the windmills okay, and uh, road accidents and even stray dogs in the areas adjacent to these uh, you know, wild habitats, they go and hunt them and not only that when they eat these locusts and other such insect pests 
you know, they die. Yes, the birds are, you know, reported to die when they eat, especially locusts. So, which are killed due to the pesticide spraying. Okay, so hence, there are so many threats associated with the great Indian bustard today. So, this is the information with relation to the great Indian bustard. Coming to the other birds in the list. So, that is Haubara. So, we look at Haubara. Haubara is a bustard. Haubara bustard. So, Haubara clamidotis. You know, Chlamydotis is the genus to which the Haubara bustard belongs to Chlamydotis ambulator. The species is ambulator. Now, this Haubara bustard is a migratory species and it is a very, you know, size of a chicken. It is maybe a small size of a chicken and it is in fact a shy bird. Now, this bird is being hunted down in Pakistan like anything. In fact, even before independence, the Arab royals were invited, you know, to hunt this bird for meat and as a sport. Even today in Pakistan, officially it's, you know, banned, hunting is banned. Special permits are issued during winter when the Arab royals come here for, you know, vacation. And in fact, in 2014, there was a big news that almost 2,000 birds were hunted. The Haubara birds were hunted by the, you know, Arab royals, especially from Saudi Arabia. As a part of soft diplomacy, Pakistan is allowing special permits to them. What is the reason why, you know, the meat is most favored? So one reason that people believe that the meat of Haubara is having aphrodisiac properties. That is, aphrodisiac means sex stimulant properties. In fact, it is wrong. In fact, many animals today in the world are being hunted just because of, you know, the uh, misbelief that the meat or any other body part is having aphrodisiac properties. So that's a different story. So this is how bad but really facing a lot of problems. Coming to the next one, Bengal Florican. If you look at the Bengal Florican, Haubarapsis bengalensis, uh, this is a, you know, the bird that uh, inhabits mostly the riverine grasslands of uh, the Brahmaputra and Ganga basin regions. Uh, it is also there in the northeast uh, India, even in can Vietnam and Cambodia also you can find it. Coming to the lesser florican, the lesser florican here, Cipheotides, uh, the scientific name of this uh, bird is uh, Cipheotides, the scientific name, the genus it belongs to is the Cipheotides and one most important thing is its species is Indicus. What, does you mean, uh, what do you mean by this? Cipheotides Indicus, it means that it is endemic to India. Remember this, it is endemic to India. Now this particular bird has come down to 80% in its population. So we just have 200 and odd birds again. So rapid, rampant, you know, what is called uh, hunting of the birds had been there for meat again. So in this way, these all bird species, so the Great Indian Bustard, the Haubara Bustard, the Bengal Florican, Lesser Florican, all these are the Bustard species, but not the Himalayan Quail. The Himalayan Quail are otherwise Mountain Quail. So please also get this information. The Himalayan Quail are Mountain Quail. In fact, so this Osprey, Ophrysia, Ophrysia, the scientific name of this is Ophrysia superciliosa. So Ophrysia superciliosa is not cited for more than 144, 145 years. Last it was seen in 1876. So this is also almost, you know, extinct. So this Himalayan quail was also uh, identified under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So please try to remember all the four birds, they are very important. How are busted? Don't, uh, you know, neglect this. So definitely there is a chance for such a question. Understanding uh, the information is very, very important. Conceptual clarity is very important for answering the right one. Okay, so remember two rules in civil service preliminary examination and any other preliminary examination with negative marks. Rule number one, never answer any question for which you don't know the answer. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Don't forget to subscribe the channel, like and share it. Okay, so thank you.